word of prayer. Yeah. And the scripture for this morning. <laughs> and we're not going to be before you long today.
St. James chapter number 5, verse 16. And we're dealing with prayer and confession. Prayer and confession. If you want to be healed of God, you must confess, and then you'll be healed. And Apostle James is one of the sons of Zebedee and one of the 12 apostles who followed Jesus Christ in his beginning ministry. And before Jesus left, he commissioned them. He says, go ye throughout the world and what? Preach the gospel to every living creature. <coughs> so he had, he's been released out of one field into the next. Now he's author, he's writing, he's dealing with young Christians, but he's also dealing with confession. So confess, but when you confess before God, expect to be healed. Whether it be physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, and then you'll be whole. Amen? It says here, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, the word fervent means to be hot spiritually. That means when you go into prayer, you're releasing your weight, your burdens, your problems. And you also don't just pray for you, but you pray for others. It's a dangerous thing to go into prayer and say, I, I, I. No, are we what? We're the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. So we pray for each other. When God lay on your heart, when you're in prayer and you see people's faces, that's when it's time for you to pray for others. God wants us to pray for one another, for strength, for faith, for courage. You never know what a person's going through, but it's the power of prayer that gives you strength and motivates you in the Holy Ghost. Amen? It says here, this verse is important. The reason why healing is often lacking in the Christian community, sin must be confessed to others. And fervent prayers of another be made of God. Mm -hmm. Sin in the church hinders prayers and believers and blocks the healing and the power of God from being manifest in the congregation. So you don't want to be, be a spiritual stumble, stumbling block. Whatever your sin is, whatever is going on inside you, you confess it before the Lord first. You have to use a lot of wisdom when you're giving your testimony, even in the church. Because some people take your testimony and they'll run with it. Oh, I knew she was struggling with something, and I knew it was that deep. You can't tell everybody what your struggle is. Prayer is what? A private time between you and your maker. It's when you yield down and get down into prayer and ask God, I need help, I need strength, I need encouragement, I need you to release this weight, this blockage. Mm -hmm. You can always tell when you didn't pray all the way through because you feel relieved, you feel released, and you don't feel any burdens on your own shoulder. Mm -hmm. And never announce to anybody when you're going into prayer. Now, because they'll call right before you get ready to go into prayer. Sometimes it's best, and I'm going to say this with wisdom, it's best for you to cut your cell phone off when you go into prayer. Cut that TV off, cut that radio off, so you can get into prayer and hear the very voice of God. But James here is telling the people, the prayers of the righteous are very much. And it, does not, it is not based upon your gender. It's the Spirit of God dwelling in the inside of you that causes you to pray. Before you get up to teach or preach, you better pray first. You ask God, what would you have me to say to your people? I was cleaning my house yesterday, and the Lord said, talk about prayer. Talk about prayer. Teach on prayer. That's the spirit of God. He wants us to pray. In prayer, some people say it takes longer, and it does. I'm learning it's becoming more than an hour. It's actually going to an hour and a half. You have to be really submerged and embraced in prayer. Mm -hmm. Like we just did praise and worship. You must set the atmosphere first. Praise, worship, and prayer. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit of God can move on the inside. So the Spirit of God can deliver you and heal you. And it heals your mind, it heals your emotions, it heals your feelings. Some of you got to go to work on this week. Guess what? You need to pray tonight. Because you don't know what's going to happen within the next 24 hours. You don't know who the enemy is going to use, who's going to come up against you. You better be prayed up when you go out of here. 
prayed up going to your job, going to school, dealing with family and folks. Somebody called me yesterday. That spirit just, just irritated me to the core. And the Lord said, stop letting him get the best of you. When you are in prayer, the voice of God will speak to you and minister to you right in the word. So in your prayer time, seek his face, call upon his name. The psalmist, I believe it's Psalm 63, says, seek me early, early in the morning will I seek thee. Mm -hmm. God wants us to seek him early and not be asking him for things. It's not always for things that you're asking God for. Amen? God wants us to seek him early. Call upon his name. Before you turn on that, um, turn on the radio or anything that you do before you get up, God wants us to seek him early. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. He want to change the atmosphere. It says here, O oh God, thou art God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, and in a dry and thirsty land. Where is my water? That is Psalm 63. So if you're taking notes, that's Psalm 63. Seek God early. Psalm 63, verse number one, the Old Testament. It says here, every believer should pray as David did. And this song, it describes a man's deep longing in his heart for God, one that can only be satisfied by intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And it says here, those who profess to know God need to examine themselves by asking and by following, do I really possess a strong desire to know God, for God, in his presence? in my life. Yes, you should have a strong desire and a fulfillment in God. But it starts off with what? Prayer. Mm -hmm. That's after you became a believer. That's after you've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and living a god fearing life. You must be consistent in your prayer time. Don't let somebody break your prayer time. I have two people that I'm dealing with right now. Every time I get ready to pray, the phone rang. The boy said, that's enough. No, no. Seek me. Don't seek them. Seek me. Amen? When you go into prayer, cut off everything so you can hear the very audible voice of the Lord. Or do through life largely con consume secular pursuits and worldly entertainment. While praying and fasting, fervent love for Jesus, study God's word. That's another step. Study God's word. <clears throat> it's one thing to pray, but it's another to study. And that causes your spirit man to have spiritual growth, spiritual knowledge, spiritual blessings. Not spiritual list, spiritual, as unto spiritual what? Gifting. And that's when you develop gifts through prayer. Mm -hmm. It says here, study God's word in a deep desire for God and his kingdom. Have little, a little place or a vitality of affection and time. You must spend quality time in prayer. Quality time. And when you do pray, don't do all the talking. Make space so the Holy Spirit, which is called the paraclete, to speak to you. We call him the paraclete. It's actually Jesus Christ, the comforter. When he left, he said, when I leave here, I shall send forth what? The comforter, St. John 14 and 16. So you need the comforter so he can minister to you fervently, speak to you, boldly. <clears throat> you have to become boldly before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Don't just pray for you, pray for others. Pray for the ministry. Pray for your home. Pray for your inner man, your spirit man. Pray for those in your surroundings. Pray for your community. Mm -hmm. We all need deliverance. We all need healing. We all need emotional healing. Amen? Let us be, stay prayed up. You'll never be selfish in prayer. And even in prayer, God reveals things to us in prayer and speaks to us. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. <clears throat> it 
says here, wherefore, he is able also to save them to do the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Who makes intercession for us? Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. It says here, Christ lives in heaven in his Father's presence, interceding for each and every one of the followers according to the Father's will. It says also, through Christ's ministry of intercession, we experience God's love and presence and find mercy and grace to him in us in times of need, temptation, weakness, sin, and trial. And that's are the things that's going to come up against you when you're in prayer. When temptation comes, God will prompt your spirit and let you know what's coming. When a test is coming, he's going to reveal to you, pick up another test. But you must remember this as an intercessor. When you fail that test, that test is coming up again. And this time, you need to stay equipped. Bomb barrage the heavens. Worship him, praise him, intercede. And when you don't know how to pray, Jesus is already praying for you. He is the chief priest of intercession. He knows our faults, our flaws. He knows everything we struggle with. So he intercedes for us when we don't know how to pray. Have you ever went into prayer and didn't know what to say? And you felt like you was stuck, felt like you were blocked, there was something going on there spiritually. So Jesus Christ is our intercessor. He intercedes for us when we don't know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. Christ, the high priest of prayer for his people, as we all his desires to pour forth the Holy Spirit upon all believers. Help us to understand the content of Christ's intercessory ministry. It is also a ministry. You don't need a license to be an intercessor. No, you don't. You don't need a license to be a prayer warrior. That's a gift. If he didn't trust you, he would have given it to you. But because he trusts you and he can reveal himself to you, he has given you that ability to pray for other people. Mm-hmm. When people ask me to pray for them now, the God so mother, I stop what I'm doing and go pray for them immediately. Because when you get on, so much is coming at you, you forget the person and ask for prayer. Like that young man asked you to pray for him. I'm going to pray for him. I should have stopped what I was doing then and prayed for him. But when I see him, I pray for him. Amen? Pray for one another. No matter what people are doing, you pray for them. Love them because God loves us. And we all have our faults. We all have our flaws. But well, guess what? As Coco, Sister Coco always said, sitting in that chair, we all a working progress. And that's true. God is working on us on every day. Even when we go into prayer, God is pulling things off our lives. Mm-hmm. Notice we don't have testimony service no more. Because testimony was becoming a little bit too much. It was revealing too much. Let me tell you something. It ain't based upon the world that has secrets. Church folks have secrets too. Church folks know how to set you up too. <laughs> Give me what I'm telling you. It ain't just the world. I'm talking about mean no church folks. There's a difference between the saints and there are those between church folks. The real saints carry the love of God. Church folks stir up more strife. Mm-hmm. What am I saying? Be an intercessor. Pray over the people. And the real Holy Spirit inside of you, that lives inside of you, tell you, I don't want you dealing with that person. That's that prayer in you. The working of God working in you. That intercessor saying, I don't want you dealing with that person. Because they got a, a bad seed in them. God will reveal. And when you finish praying, pick up them dreams. That's another part of intercession. You start dreaming. Taking trips and journeys in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Allow God to intercede through you. It says here, because Christ, the intercession, them that come, it says here, present tense, participate, emphasize on a continual coming to God to receive a fullness of grace and salvation. Christ's intercession as the high priest is essential to our salvation. Without grace, mercy, and help, uh, meditates, 
meditates to us through his intercession. We would fall away from God once again to be enslaved in sin and the domination of Satan and occur just in condemnation. Our hope and security is in coming to God through Christ by faith. We, when we pray, we're praying by faith. We believe. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in thine heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And you should be able to call those things that be not as though they are. By through what? The faith of God. So while you're praying, you're stirring up the faith of God that's inside of you. He has all given every last one of us mustard seed faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. He has given us faith. Even in our prayer time. Even when we feel discouraged and feel like we can't make it another day. Here comes God's faith inside of us. Mm -hmm. It says here, now that Christ does not remain an advocate, interce intercessors for those who refuse to confess and forsake sin and who depart from the fellowship with God. His intercession can save them to the uttermost is the only one that can come through God by him. There is no safety and security for those who deliberately sin and abandon God. God don't leave us, we leave him. But when you sin, you go, that's when you go to God and ask God to forgive you. And that's one of the real saints that seasoned and mature in Christ to pray for you. Everybody can't pray for you. Everybody cannot walk with you. Everybody cannot befriend you. Everybody's not going where you're going in God. So when you don't feel like praying, not only ask me, but those who are living the life. You know, some of the saints that's been saved 30 and 40 and 50 years, some of the people know how to pray. Mm -hmm. The church mothers, that's 60, 70, and 80, they will lay hands on you and pray for you. And you will get delivered and you will live the life. Like we was talking about Ruth in the, in the Bible this morning. She lived a life before those two women, her daughter-in-laws. And she followed God all the way to the very end. God wants to see even in your prayer time, are you going to follow him all the way? What's going to keep you? Prayer, faith, and the word. But you must pray first. You must be in communication with your creator. Mm -hmm. He wants to hear what's in your heart and in your spirit. You don't want us to carry unnecessary yokes or burdens. He wants us to carry the word. You want us to carry the word. When you start carrying the word, you become a danger to the enemy. And Satan hates when you pray. He get angry. Have you ever tried to pray and fell asleep? <laughs> and you wasn't even sleeping. So you know what I do? When I fall asleep, I wake back up and I start all over again. Keep a prayer life. Live the life of a believer, but keep a prayer life. God wants us to rest in him. Even, and sometimes God will tell you, okay, I hear you. But let me minister this to you. Sometimes when you go into prayer, the presence is already set. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you ain't even got to open your mouth. God just start talking to you. Mm -hmm. Keep a prayer life. I never forget as I close. I was, I think it was in 97. And I was living down the street by the Hamburg Bridge, my first apartment. And I had a dream. I was in a dark place. And I told the Lord, there's no darkness in you. What am I doing here? He said to me, he said, Randy, I want you to do this. He said, I want you to pray in English. And while you're praying, I'm going to give you my spirit to pray in tongues. And I went from English to tongues. Mother, that dream was pitch black. When I finished praying, you can see that it was like a whole other world. And you know what he said at the end? He said, I've been calling you to be an intercessor. He said, you haven't been praying fervently. He said, but in this season, I want you in prayer. Every time I woke up at 4 o'clock, I find myself in prayer. From 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And the girl downstairs that lived up under me, her name is Leona Clark. She said, I heard you pray from 4 to 5 o'clock almost the whole year. She said, you didn't know those prayers helped me. So you don't know how you will help a person. 
Not bragging, not boasting. Y'all know me, I'm not no boastful person. I try to stay humble at all times. And, and, and let me help you, just because I'm humble don't mean I'm weak. Just because somebody got a gentle nature, don't mean they are softy. You can't let people run all over you. So she told me that, I said, what? She said, you didn't interrupt my sleep. She said, but I had to lay there and listen to you pray. She said, you prayed until you got a breakthrough. She said, I heard everything you said. She said, you didn't know those prayers helped me get through my day. Four o'clock in the morning. And that's when God started revealing things to me. That was about 22 years ago. This is 2019, 22 years ago. When I moved over here at 5, uh, 312, the same thing happened again. I didn't know the lady was listening, Miss Gail Bryant. And uh, she had that cat called Silver. And she said, I heard you praying. She said, hmm. She said, Red, I know you pray like that. I said, yeah. She said, you keep praying. She said, I needed that. So you never know who life you're going to touch, even as a prayer warrior. We look at all these titles, but are you praying? Are you seeking the face of God? Are you giving God your all? Are you giving up this world? You can be in the world, but not of it. God wants all of you, your whole heart, your being. You give up a lot as a Christian. I don't care what nobody tell you. You give up a lot to serve God, but it's worth it at the end. Amen? So keep praying. Stay in the faith. Build up your prayer life. Build up your prayer time. Seek the face of God. 60, Psalm 63. Pray early in the morning. If the Lord wake you up, that's for you to pray. And, and that's not the time to go asking for things. That's when you start asking God for help. Be your help. Be your strength. Amen? So the message was, keep a prayer life. Keep a prayer life. Mm -hmm. Amen? So let us be encouraged on today. Let's stay in the word. Let's stay faithful. Stay in God's presence. And be encouraged, everyone. I am Pastor of Prophetic Voice, Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries. So be blessed, everyone. Amen.